If you've ever driven past this building on North Tryon Street and wondered what it is, it's home to Wesley Mancini Limited. Wesley enjoys an international reputation in the fabric world as a, one of the top designers. I like to convey in, in a textile something that's beautiful and sumptuous and tactilely pleasurable. This studio is really a, probably a secret that most people don't know about. And they're just surprised that this exists in Charlotte. They have no idea. Part of it is that we don't deal with the public. We don't deal with the public directly. Many of the competitors that he has are in major metropolitan areas, like in New York. Um, so for him to be here and to be committed to this community was really quite astounding. Wesley and his team produce a new line of fabrics every six months. The guy just looks at the entire world for inspiration. Designing fabric is a complicated process that begins with identifying trends in the marketplace and finding inspiration. When you take a look and walk into his office or you walk into a house, you see things from all over the world, from everywhere. That When he's drawing on doing his work, he's drawing from every culture, every religion, from nature, from rocks, from everything. Everyone has their own gift, and mine is my eye for unusual. Inspiration for his designs can also spring from his large collection of antiquarian books and endless files of fabrics housed in the archive room. This is where we keep uh, our historic textiles that are not fabrics that we produce, but fabrics that we bought from around the world. My oldest fabric is from the Renaissance. It doesn't take long to figure out that Wesley's knowledge of fabric design is encyclopedic. This particular drawer is filled with uh, fabrics that are a little more sensitive. This also was uh, purchased from the Bernheimer collection, which was, he was a fabric dealer in Germany for all the royal families around Europe. That particular yarn is only going back and forth here and here. So that means someone by hand wove all that. The next step in the process is painting. I like the idea of keeping art in fabric design. You know, we're all artists here. There's 17 of us. We have artists and designers and colorists. It's a hub of creativity. Most designers today rely on computer-generated art but what they gain in speed, they lose in quality. I'm all about perfection and the detail. People in the industry can tell a difference, they and they're the ones who buy the fabric first. The fine art approach is tied to the fact that Wesley is an artist himself. I wanted to become an art teacher from high school, because the only unusual person that I knew growing up in Connecticut was the art teacher. It wasn't for me, I had headaches. The kids just drove me crazy. Um, and I realized I can't do this for a living. <laughs> While in art school, Wesley found his true calling. Textiles was one of the courses I took and I just had a natural affinity towards it. I just liked it. By 25, he had earned his MFA in fabric design from the Cranbrook Academy of Art. The textile industry brought him to the Carolinas where he made a name for himself at a young age and continues to enjoy a reputation as a top designer. His current domestic contract is with Valdez Weavers. Once a design has been edited, it is sent via modem to the mill. They create samples that are sent back to the office for color trials. What I, you see here is 300 to 400 color combinations. I'll take out you know, the ones that I don't like. At this stage, Wesley and Ed narrow the selections down even further. So what we're trying now to do now is just determine which ones of these are the best colors woven on this dark brown combination. And so we're just showing you one color here. Ed and I get it down to the final 20 or 30, and then we get Roberta in here and the three of us do the final final. Wesley apart from other designers is the, just the true attention to detail that he puts into 
first of all, the design, and then the construction, and then finally the color. We, we work things over again and again and again until we get it right. So you don't always see his name on the furniture that you're buying. It's really sold through all sorts of mass marketers without his name associated with it. But you're sitting on it in times when you never know that that's your fabric. He'll walk into your house and say, that's my fabric. Oh, I know mine. Just like you, you recognize your own children. <laughs> you never forget them. As with his designs, he never forgets his friends. He just uh, has a way of going through the world of collecting people, and they all seem to stay around with him. I've been working with Wesley for 25 years. It began with just the two of us. I've been with Wesley Mancini for um, 13 years now. I think 20 years in August. He's a wonderful person to work for, and where else can I draw and color and paint all day long and get paid for it? They've helped me through really hard times because the textile industry has gone through devastating times in this country, and I'm very grateful for them for standing by me. You know, at the same time, he can have dinner parties that are reported in the Charlotte Observer's social pages. He also hangs out with regular, um, a lot of regular people, too. This could be a result of his modest upbringing in Connecticut. It may not have been a family that had a lot of financial resources that he came from, but he came from a family that had enormous love, and I think he really draws on that and the way that he approaches the world. When I was in undergraduate school, I realized that I was gay, and I didn't want to be gay. So I went to therapy, and I realized quickly that it was okay. I mean, it's who I am, and so I got over it. When he came out to his mother, she embraced him with open arms. Everyone always wished that they had parents like her. And, and then I couldn't believe when I moved down here to the South that people were kicked out of their families for being who they were. Almost a decade ago, when the play Angels in America opened in Charlotte, it created an uproar, leading to local protests and subsequent cuts in arts funding. In response, Wesley created a foundation. That made me start the Wesley Mancini Foundation because someone had to look out for the gay and lesbian community because no one else was. And its mission was really to support freedom of expression in Charlotte and the inclusion of the LGBT community in Charlotte. It's really full participants in what's going on here. Ten years ago, to be able to be so open in Charlotte was a really bold maneuver for Wesley. In 2002, Wesley was recognized by the Human Rights Campaign for his activism, an honor he cherishes. His foundation continues to fund a range of projects, and Wesley continues to make his presence known in the community at large. Currently, he serves on the board for the McCall Center for Visual Art. When uh, the community sees someone like Wesley making uh, or demonstrating uh, the level of commitment that he has, both financially and in terms of his time, it makes them pay attention. Wesley and his partner Bob Shear routinely open their home for fundraising efforts, like this one for the McCall Center. And Wesley has branched out not just in the community, but in his professional realm as well. We're definitely becoming more global, and a lot of products are, are happening. Um, it's a very exciting time for us. He is currently under contract with China-based Westgate Couture to produce a new line of bedding. The relationship with China and the bedding line are firsts for the company. And it's the first time we're selling end product. It's fun. It's very different. He's a passionate guy about the causes, and he's a brilliant guy to be able to continue to run a business um, still out of Charlotte that's dealing with now mills in China instead of mills in High Point. An amazing transformation for him and for us. For Wesley, it's business as usual, and he leaves us with one wish. I want the world to know that they have to have pattern in their life. 